am Dr. Alexander Edujemfi, founder and presiding bishop of Bible Believers Tabernacle. Welcome to Life Lessons series on Diaspora TV. In this series of lessons, I hope to provide you with some useful information that will guide you in navigating some of life's challenging moments. Life as we know it is full of many hurdles which can prevent us from living our lives the way God intended for us. In fact, these hurdles are important for character building and for making us better and smarter. It is important to capitalize on these hurdles as stepping stones to get ahead in our lives. I would like to open this series by treating bitterness and how to overcome it. Have you ever been disappointed or hurt by people around you, either by their actions or by their ways? I'm almost certain that your answer to the question would be yes. Because disappointment is just as part of life as is eating and drinking. This simple fact of life poses a challenge to us. All because the wounds left behind when we get hit, especially by the actions or words of those we love, who seed bitterness in our hearts. This bitterness is a dangerous spirit empowered by unforgiveness, which, if left unaddressed, could disintegrate our mental and overall health. It can also make us sinful and unacceptable in the sight of God. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32, the Bible admonishes us to get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger. It teaches us rather to be kind and have compassion for one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ in God forgave us. In Acts chapter 8, verse 22 and 23, also calls on us to repent of our wickedness and pray unto the Lord to forgive the ill intent engraved in our heart by the provocation of bitterness. Beloved, many precious lives, many relationships, many enterprises have been destroyed because of untamed bitterness. In this series of lessons, I will discuss with you some principles that will help you detect the signs and symptoms of bitterness so that you can better prepare to deal with it quickly or overcome its detrimental effects. Here are a few of the topics we will be treating. We shall be looking into the definition of bitterness. Number two, facts about bitterness. Three, how and why people become bitter in life. Four, how bitterness can affect your life. Five, case studies on people in the Bible who became bitter and the impact it had on them. Six, how to overcome bitterness. And the last but not the least, number seven, how to deal with bitter people. What then is bitterness? Beloved, bitterness is defined as a resentful cynicism that results in an intense antagonism or hostility towards others. It is simply fermented unforgiveness that poisons one to hold on to or show feelings of intense animosity or be inclined onto revenge. Here are a few facts about bitterness. Number one, bitterness is deepening of anger, which gets worse over time. Anger in itself is not sin, but allowing it to settle and grow or deepen into resentment is sinful. According to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26, we should not let the sun go down on our anger. Bitterness is internally destructive. That is, bitterness destroys you as a person before its manifestations are seen or felt by other people. 
Bitterness solves nothing. It builds nothing. But it can destroy everything. All that you have painstakingly gained in life could be destroyed by bitterness. Bitterness can close doors of opportunity. Bitter people often receive no promotion. Bitterness does not reward you. Rather, it punishes you with the mistakes of others. Let's talk about some signs of bitterness. Beloved, bitter people often find it difficult to forgive others. Unforgiveness causes us to hold on to bitterness long enough for it to ripen into a full-blown resentment. It provides false justification to hold on to your hurt or disappointment in an attempt to remind you or perhaps others of the injustice that have been done unto you. Better people are quick to pass unfounded judgments. Better people easily condemn the actions of others with little to no consideration. Better people are often secluded. They tend to stick to themselves instead of being involved. Better people are at times malevolent. They may wish to do evil unto others. Now, why do people become better in life? There are many reasons why people become better in life. And in this segment, I will tackle a few of these reasons. But more importantly, I want you to think of some of the things that have caused you to be better now or even in the past. We've all suffered this before, one way or the other. Perhaps... You've received one too many criticisms from your boss at work. That is quickly becoming unbearable. What about sabotage? Have you felt someone was intentionally sabotaging your effort at work or even within your family? For those of you who are opening up businesses or building properties in your home countries, perhaps some friends or even family members are squandering your monies. What about conflicts even in, the, in your past? Or current relationships? What about conflict at the church? I hope you were able to come up with few reasons of your own. Here are some of the reasons I want to discuss. Perhaps we may find some agreement here. Number one. People become better in life because of unfulfilled expectations. We all have expectations in life, some of which have been entertained since childhood. Here are a few examples. That is educational or career expectations. Many of us dreamt of becoming doctors, lawyers, teachers, among others. But when looking back, it may seem that these dreams have eluded us. What about marital expectations? Some of us grew up dreaming of what our mar marital life would be like. The kind of special love, trust, and understanding, mutual respect and desire even to grow a healthy and wealthy family. Whilst partners even in marriage or even a relationship who have a similar aspiration, there could be different level of priority assigned by each other. This could at times create conflict of interest that could bring about disappointment if left untamed. And this could see bitterness because preconceived expectations are not met. What about retirement expectations? Who wouldn't want to retire at the age of 50 and be financially independent? But how many of us could say for sure that this is a settled fact? People become better 
in life because of unwillingness to accept responsibility. Many people struggle to accept blame. It's almost always seeming easier and much more fulfilling to shift the blame to someone else. Not accepting our sticky in a squabble is a slippery pathway to becoming bitter in life. People also become bitter in life because of unforgiveness. This is one of the major reasons why many people become bitter in life. An American author, Marian Williamson, once said that, and I quote, unforgiveness is like drinking poison yourself and waiting for others to die. If left unaddressed, could ruin one's health and overall life. Spiritually, unforgiveness precludes us from receiving forgiveness from God. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 and up to 26, teaches us that it is impossible to receive forgiveness from God if we cannot forgive our debtors. Beloved, people become better in life because of their desire to seek revenge. One of the fruits of unforgiveness is holding of grudges, which mature into desire for revenge. However, in Romans chapter 12, verse 17 up to 21, Paul teaches us to repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. People become better in life because of hopelessness. When all, even hope, seem lost, bitterness will gain root in one's life. It is important to always remember that all things are possible with God. As it is said in Luke chapter 1, verse 37. In fact, our God is nearer in times of despair than we may think and is forever ready to deliver us from all our afflictions, as is already stated in Psalm 34, verse 17 up to 20. Bitterness is a corrosive force that can ruin one's life. It could be detrimental to your health. This is a powerful connection between the mind and the body. Emotions which are generated from the mind affect our body and can cause serious health problems. Beloved, research from Concordia University dating back in 2011 even suggests that feelings of bitterness can have negative impact on the person's physical health. Bitterness can have the following negative impact on your health. Number one, it can crumble your psychological well-being. It can make you overly anxious. Remember, the Bible cautions us not to be anxious for anything. Number three, it can increase your stress level. Number four, it can cause serious depression. Five, it can make you hostile to yourself and to others. Six, it can disintegrate your immune system. Seven, bitterness can have negative impact on your heart. Eight, it can lower your self-esteem and prevent you from achieving your potential. Nine, it can cause you to become self-defeating. Ten, it can cause you to lose your focus. 11. Bitterness can deprive you from experiencing the potential joys of living in the present. 12. It can compromise your ideals and negatively impact your search for purpose and meaning in life. 13. It can rob you of the energy you need to realize your dream and achieve your goals with. 14. Bitterness can isolate you from 
the world around you. 15. When bitterness gains rule in your life, it can isolate you from friends, from family, and from loved ones. That is, it can break your relationship. 16. It can interfere with developing healthy and satisfying relationship with others. 16. It can make you an ineffective communicator and contributor. And the last but not the least, bitterness can adversely affect your spiritual well-being and distance you from God. Let us consider a few case studies on people in the Bible who became bitter and the impact it had on their enterprises. For starters, Let's look at the story of Naomi. This story is set in the time of the judges, a historic era of religious and moral decline. It sounds familiar to the era that we live in, isn't it? During this time, there was a great famine in Israel, and many people relocated to foreign lands in search for greener pastures. A man from Bethlehem named Elimelech took his wife, Naomi, and his two sons to Moab to find food, but they ended up living in a new land. Elimelech died, and Naomi, his wife, continued to live with her two sons, who had married Moabite woman named Opa and Ruth. Unfortunately, after about 10 years of living in this very fallen land, both sons also died, leaving Naomi with her two foreign daughter-in-laws. Word arrived unto Naomi that the Lord had delivered the people of Israel from the famine that invaded them. So she decided to return home to her own people and urge her foreign daughters-in-law even to return to their own families. During their exchange, Naomi lamented her bitter experience and profoundly stated that the Lord's hand had turned against her. In fact, the account goes that when Naomi and Ruth, the wife of her elder son, or Malon, returned to Bethlehem, the city was pleased to have them back and warmly welcomed her. But Naomi was not so fascinated. She asked them to call her Mara instead of Naomi because the Lord Almighty had made her life better. She said, and I quote from Ruth chapter 1, verse 21, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty had brought misfortune upon me. Beloved, can you see how bitterness overwhelmed her? I can only imagine how lost she must have felt. Just imagine after coming to live in America or whatever foreign land you find yourself in right now, if something of that sort happened to you, what would you say or do? Again, let me remind you that even in our times of despair, the Lord is so near us. He never abandoned us, for he is always willing and able to deliver us from the affliction that we are in. Only if we can wait upon him, he will renew our strength and cause us to soar like eagles. All this while, the Lord was preparing her to become the great grandmother of our Lord Jesus Christ. What she could not see was that through her, Ruth will be guided on the right path to becoming the wife of the rich landowner named Boaz. And that together, they will give birth to Obed, the father of Jesse, the father of King David. What you are going through can and will work for your good only if you trust in God. Being better will not solve any of the problems that you are going through. 
It will not build any fortune for you. Only one thing is sure with bitterness, and that is distraction. Beloved, let's look at how bitterness almost destroyed Jonah's life. Jonah's story is set in the 7th century after King Jeroboam II had restored the traditional borders of the northern kingdom and ended a half century conflict between Israel and Damascus. This victorious restoration was in part due to the Assyrian campaign and defeat of the Damascus and also due to internal conflict in Assyria. Regardless of the restoration and peace, Assyria still remained a real threat from the north. Against this backdrop, God called Jonah one day and told him to go and preach to Nineveh, which at that time was the capital of Assyria. It is no surprise that Jonah wanted to have nothing to do with this city because it was one of the Israel's greatest enemy. So, instead of heeding to God's command, he tried to run on a ship heading in the opposite direction. God sent a great storm upon the ship and the men, even on the boat, blamed him for bringing God's wrath upon him. They threw him off the ship to die. But God, in his wisdom, miraculously sent a big fish to rescue and send him back to Nineveh, where his assignment was. While inside the fish, he realized how bitter experiences and injustice from Assyrian oppression had caused him to sin against God. He repented of his sin and praised God. After his ordeal, he preached to the people of Nineveh and warned them to repent or the city will be destroyed in 40 days. The people repented and God had mercy on them. Bitterness caused Jonah to disobey God. If it wasn't for God's mercy, it would have caused him to die even in the sea after being rejected and ejected off the ship. His bitterness would have caused the ultimate destruction of the whole city whose people God had sent him to deliver. How about the story of Absalom and Ammon? Their story is one of the earliest misfortunes experienced by King David as a result of his sexual sin with Bathsheba. King David's third son, Absalom, had a sister named Tamar and a half-brother called Ammon. Ammon was infatuated with his half-sister, Tamar. It is said that Tamar was a very beautiful damsel, and Ammon, her half-brother, was head over heels, infatuated with her. In fact, his infatuation was so bad that it was having negative effect on his health. He confided in his friend Jonadab, whose scheme to draw Tamar onto Ammon's bed. The story goes that Ammon followed through with Jonadab's plan and pretended to be sick. He asked his father, David, to tell his half-sister, Tamar, to come and serve him some food and nurse him back to health. And David agreed. When Tamar arrived at Ammon's house, he sent everyone away so he can have time along with her. Instead of the food which he had prepared for him at his own request, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. So, Tama strongly refused and begged him not to do such evil deed, but he forced himself on her and raped her. After that, he hated her the more than even he had supposedly loved her and sent her away from his house in disgrace. Now when Absalom, Thomas' full brother, heard of this, he was furious and he hated Ammon for it. For two years, 
he allowed the anger to brood and consequently ordered his servant to murder his half brother in a revenge for what he had done to his sister. As it's been recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 28. Beloved, Absalom had succumbed to bitterness and his life as he knew it was over. He fled from home and did not even see his father's face for more than three years. He would later seek to take over his father's throne, which would result in his own death. In Esther chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 too, we are introduced to yet another bitter experience in the Bible whose ultimate demise will be a direct consequence of bitterness. And that is Haman, the Agagite, determined to destroy the Jewish people because of generational strife that has long lasted centuries before his time. For status, Haman was a descendant of Agag, the king of the Amalekite. Now, if you will remember, the Amalekites were bitter enemies of Israel for generations, as has been recorded in Exodus chapter 17, verse 14 up to 16. Not only that, in 1 Samuel chapter 6, 7, 15, verse 33, the prophet Samuel killed King Agag of the Amalekites after Saul has spared his life. I hope you begin to appreciate how embittered Haman would be against the Jewish people. According to the biblical account in Esther chapter, chapter 3, verse 5 up to 6, Haman sought to destroy all the Jewish in the land just because Mordecai was a Jew and refused to kneel and pay him homage unto him. Through his cunning ways, he was able to get a law passed. That would cause the mass murder of the Jewish people. God being so good, the plan flopped as Queen Esther used her position to intervene for her people. Beloved, bitterness is the bringer of doom. Nothing good can come out of it. Now the question is, how to overcome bitterness. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15, the Bible tells us to make every effort to live in peace with all men and to, and to be holy, without which no man shall see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. How can we overcome bitterness. Number one, acknowledge the problem. First and foremost, you must assess yourself to determine if you are embittered. What has been done unto you that has caused you to be bitter? If you find sincerely that you are not harboring any bitterness, then we thank God. However, Note that the first step to resolving any conflict in life is acknowledging that a problem exists. If you find any trace of bitterness in you because of an injustice done unto you by someone else, then you should work harder to get it resolved. Number three, confess the sin of bitterness. Remember that Harboring bitterness is a sin. You must confess and renounce the sin of bitterness. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 says that, Whoever conceals his sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Forgive, point number four, forgive your offenders. Perhaps the most difficult step in overcoming bitterness is forgiveness. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible tells us to bear with each other and forgive one another if any one of you has a grievance against someone. 
Forgive. Ask the Lord forgive you. When you forgive your debtors, you simply return justice unto the Lord and to exact as he, fit, as he sees fit. Point number five. Restore love. Often, when people wrong us, it becomes difficult for us to love them. And now, these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love. As is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Beloved, I hope you have gathered some ammunition to combat bitterness in your life. No matter who you are, no matter how good a person you are, there will always be times when you feel bitter about a situation or someone. There will always be times when people either by words or action will disappoint you. But you must strive to quickly get over such disappointment so that it doesn't ripen into bitterness. The flip side of the coin could also be true. Your actions or your words could also cause others to become better. Be careful when dealing with others and ensure that in your ways you treat others as you would want them to treat you. Remember the following key points the next time you are hurt. Number one, learn to forgive. Number two, learn to forgive. Number three, learn to forgive. In case you did not hear what I just said, let me say it again for the good measure. Learn to forgive. Unforgiveness will make a little disappointment grow into bitterness, which will inevitably reduce the quality of your life. Choose to love over hate. In Romans chapter 12, verse 18 and 19, the Bible teaches us that if it's possible, as far as it depends on us, we should live at peace with all men. Finally, always remember that vengeance is the Lord's. Take it unto the Lord in prayer and leave it unto him to exact his justice. I cannot close this very topic without giving you the chance to reach out to people in your life whom you are at all with. Pick up a phone. Make that call. Resolve the issue once and for all. I'm not saying call them to quarrel or explain yourself, but simply to let to tell them that you love them and that the long-standing quarrel is over. Until next time that I come on your way, I am Dr. Alexander Dujenfi. This is Life Lesson Series on Diaspora TV. God bless you.